Alright, in this Regents Chemistry video, we're going to go through questions 36 through 40 of the January 2013 Regents. So for 36, uh, it asks, what is the oxidation number of iodine in this compound KiO4? Uh, so all we need to do here is just use our oxidation rules. Uh, so potassium is always going to be plus one. Uh, we can look at the periodic table over here and it kind of tells us the possible charges. Uh, potassium always going to be plus one, uh, like all of these group one elements, they like to be plus one because that gives them the full octet, right? So uh, oxygen over here, minus two charge. Uh, so looking at this compound, we know that this potassium is going to be plus one, this oxygen is going to be minus two. So what is iodine going to be? Well, it has to make the overall charge in the compound add up to zero. So we have negative two for each of these oxygens, and there's four of them. So negative two times four gives us a total charge for oxygen of negative eight. Now we know we have one potassium and it's plus one, so that gives us a total charge of plus one for that. So plus one plus x, we'll say here, minus eight has to give us zero. So x here, as you would uh, imagine, will be plus seven. So iodine here is actually going to have a plus seven charge because that's what would make the overall charge of this compound add up to zero. So that would be answer choice three here. So again, we know based on the periodic table, oxygen likes to have this minus two charge. Potassium likes to have this plus one charge here. Iodine though can have all these different charges. So it's gonna kind of take whatever is left over uh, when oxygen and potassium get their way because they're really, uh, really rigid in their desire for their certain charges, right? So. Uh, looking at this, again, we have negative 2 for oxygen. There's four of them. That makes a total of negative 8. Potassium, there's one of them, each plus 1. That makes plus 1. Uh, plus 1 plus whatever iodine is, minus 8, has to give us 0 because, again, in these compounds, always the charge needs to add up to 0. So iodine here would then have to be plus 7. Again, answer choice 3. For question 37, what is the chemical formula for zinc carbonate? So uh, you can go into your reference table and find the formula for carbonate using the polyatomic ions table. So CO3 minus 2 would be the formula for carbonate. And we have zinc. So the key is you have all these things with zinc and carbonate. This, this doesn't have the right formula for carbonate, so we can eliminate it right away. Uh, there's different proportions here we can tell. There's one zinc, one carbonate. One zinc, two carbonates. Two zincs, one carbonate. What we need to figure out is what is the charge on the zinc. That we can get straight off the periodic table here. Zinc has a charge of plus two. So uh, zinc plus two, carbonate minus two. Again, we need to make the charges add up to zero. Plus two, minus two, that would give us zero. So that means we just need one zinc and one carbonate. So remember, one of each. We don't write the ones as subscripts. So this is just gonna be ZnCO3 for our formula. That would be answer choice one. For question 38, why is CH4 nonpolar? So, to determine whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar, we're going to use SNAP. Remember, we're looking at the symmetry of the molecule. So, if the molecule is symmetrical, that makes it nonpolar. If it's asymmetrical or uneven, that makes it polar. So, CH4 here, uh, well, it already tells us it's nonpolar, so we must know that the molecule is symmetrical. So the geometric shape of a CH4 molecule just distributes the charges asymmetrically. No, because then it would be polar. So it distributes them symmetrically. So the answer here is choice three. It's talking about the bonds here as well, whether the bonds are polar or ionic. That really has nothing to do with it because it's asking about what is the polarity of the molecule. It says the molecule is nonpolar. For the molecular polarity, we always look at SNAP. To see whether a bond is polar or nonpolar, we look at the two elements in the bond. So if we have, let's say, C and H bonded to each other, this is going to be a polar bond because we have two different things bonded to each other. So for bond polarity, you see, is it two of the same thing or two different things bonded to each other? And that will tell you whether it's polar or nonpolar. For the molecule, however, you really just use SNAP. If the whole shape is symmetrical, that makes it nonpolar. You could really, they didn't have to tell you that CH4 is nonpolar here. We would, we would just draw it out and we'd get a molecule looking like this. We have all these hydrogens around this uh, carbon. This is even all the way around. This would be symmetrical then. No matter how you slice it right, we could kind of chop it like that, chop it like that. It's symmetrical uh, either way you do it. Uh, so this is going to be a molecule that is nonpolar because symmetrical, nonpolar. All right, so then looking at question 39. Which atom in the ground state has the same electron configuration as calcium plus two in the ground state? 
So calcium plus 2, we can look at the periodic table over here. Calcium's over here. If it's plus 2, that means it's lost 2 electrons. So if it loses 1 electron, then it gets bumped to this electron configuration of potassium. If it loses then another electron to make itself plus 2, then it gets this argon configuration. Uh, so if uh, an, an element is losing electrons, we're kind of taking it down uh, from like number 20 here to 19 to 18. If it were a, uh, an atom gaining electrons and becoming a negative ion, then we would go the other way. Let's say it was sulfur minus 2, we would go from here to chlorine to argon that way. So sulfur minus 2 or calcium plus 2, they're actually going to have the same electron configuration here because sulfur gains 2 electrons, it goes from 16 to 18 total electrons. Calcium loses two electrons, it goes from 20 to 18 as well. So both of these would have the same uh, electron configuration, this argon configuration. So uh, the answer here is going to be argon, which atom in the ground state has the same electron configuration as this calcium ion that we just made. And we just showed here that when calcium loses two electrons, it becomes the argon configuration. For question 40 here, on compound KHSO4, there's an ionic bond between what? So the first thing you have to identify with this problem, if it's ionic bonding, there has to be some sort of breakup here between the two ions. So here, uh, the way to make that it would make sense to break this up is between the potassium and the HSO4 ion. So K plus plus HSO4 minus. Those would be our two ions here. Uh, so this kind of gives the answer away uh, already, but this is going to be K plus and HSO4 minus. So within this molecule here, we have covalent bonding because we have uh, sulfur, oxygen, oxygen. Uh, I'm not going to finish this whole Lewis structure, but there are uh, bonds between the sulfur and the oxygen that are going to be covalent bonding. These are not ionic bonds. The electronegativity difference is not that high between sulfur and oxygen. Uh, whereas we have this ion here, HSO4, this complex ion, and potassium here, the K plus ion, and these are going to form an ionic bond between each other. When you have a polyatomic plus something like group 1 or group 2, that's going to form an ionic bond. So we have K plus and HSO4 minus. So the key here was to just figure out how are we going to break up this compound in a way that would make sense for an ionic bond. It already told us that it was ionic bond here. So what we might think to do is like K plus plus H plus plus SO4 minus 2, but you, can, you can't really make an ionic bond here. There's too many ions floating around, right? An ionic bond is always going to be something positive and something negative. So here we have two positives. It just really wouldn't work out well for an ionic bond. Uh, so I, uh, again, with an ionic bond, we have something positive, something negative. So our positive here was K plus. Our negative was HSO4 minus. All right, so that would be answer choice four. All right, we'll pick up with question 41 in the next video. Thanks for watching.